Welcome everybody to another CTC software webinar. My name is Mahsan Omid. Um, I'm the technical specialist at SolidCAD here in Calgary. Uh, I'm covering Central and Western Canada uh, firms. And today we are going to be presenting an introduction to MEP PP, <laughs> which is basically having a lot of P's, uh, MEP productivity pack. So the, the MEP PP is short for MEP Pro productivity pack. Um, today we are going to be fo focusing um, on the discipline mechanical and plumbing. And next week, we're going to be having another session that is dedicated for um, electrical design firms. This is my email address, write it down. If you are having any questions after the webinar, I would be happy to answer your questions. All right, so before jumping into uh, the demo for the MEPPP, uh, for um, for different series and scenarios of the productivity pack in SolidCAD, I want to uh, give you some heads up about the other sessions. So mark your calendars uh, for all of those different sessions that SolidCAD is going to be having during the uh, month, during basically uh, fall and winter. Uh, today is going to be the 27th, so it is going to be uh, marking up our introduction for mechanical. Um, on November 3rd, I'm also going to be presenting another session for introduction to electrical. On Monday, November the 9th, my friend Patrick Simek, which by the way is uh, also um, in this session covers electrical features and project, project starts for electrical 2 to 3 p.m. ESD. Uh, November 26, Patrick also talks about mechanical features and project, project startup. So this session is only going to be all about what is the MEPPP, what, what goes into the pack, etc. He is going to be talking about the project to start up, how, when you're going to be featuring the MEPPP, how you're going to be starting a, a typical project and how you're going to be working with. So mark your calendar, November 26, uh, 1.30 to 2.30 uh, p.m. ESD. And in December, my coworker Drew Jarvis is going to, pre to be presenting um, workflow specifics to electrical industry. So that's basically going to be talking about the MEPPP uh, featured coupled with CTC suites. Um, so CTC suites is also um, a set of tools that, that is going to simulate all of your mundane tasks um, and uh, for, uh, and, and featuring uh, those CTC tools for for, that, that are available for purchase. So he's going to be demonstrating how the MEPPP working very seamlessly with CTC suites. For mechanical, for electrical work, workflow, this December 15th, and for the mechanical workflow on January 18th. Uh, obviously, these are only the English versions of, <coughs> of MEPPP. We are also having introduction sessions for French too. All right, so let's jump, jump into our demonstration. First of all, I'm going to ask you guys if you get to know what is MEPPP. There are, there are a lot of people asking me, how can I install it? Is it going to be a plugin for Revit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the first uh, thing that I wanted to draw to your attention to is that this, this, is, this is not an installed version of the software, it's a starter project. Um, what is a, a little bit of background about this is uh, a lot of firms, I have been working in the industry for 15 years, 
um, for, for Revit development, 10 years of which directly working with Revit MEP and directly he helping firms moving from uh, to, to Revit. Uh, show me a lot of the struggling processes uh, when they are going to be hopping on BIM. MEP companies are moving from AutoCAD, thinking about that they are going to be up and ready on uh, especially Revit MEP implementation, whereas the industry is lacking a lot of useful information from the Revit out of the box. So be it, um, th those useful information are um, useful mechanical data from the MEP equipment or fabrication compatible data, um, so rather than building things from the scratch every single time that a firm is going to be hopping on Revit MEP, SolidCAD partnered up with uh, some providers uh, and pack of resources from Revit MEP, which is um, easy to remove and customize. And, it, um, and it's obviously needed some kind of customization and tweaking, but uh, not reinventing the wheels every single time. So that is what the package is all about. The next question is, what's in it? What if you are going to be talking about this, these productivity packs, what after we are purchasing the pack, what are we going to get into this? These are the very he headquarters, the, the, um, the titles of what goes into your MEPPP. Over 5,000 of hours of development time with the ready-made uh, fabrication, uh, fabrication data and everything in the industry session. Industry established workflow. Um, the some some built-in uh, creation of resources, families, data, parameters built around mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection integration. Written and video helps over like 18 hours of written and video helps in the productivity pack, so you can just easily follow the pack. Over 2,200 shared parameters that you can be using for many different schedules and data uh, creation, which Drew is going to be talking about when you are com com combining these with the CTC tools for shared parameter, Jammer, and um, all of those other uh, CTC tools. It is going to be saving a, um, a lot of hours of working on mundane tasks in Revit MEP. Intelligent auto sizing family content and smart connector controls on those family creations. Analytical views for rapid design analysis. A lot of the view templates for consistent visibility and controls. So basically on a click of a button, you're going to get to those features and, vis uh, and uh, visible contents, um, and then hiding those contents that are not related to that field. Live single bit legends for accurate cover sheets. Sorry. And 280 different schedules. All of those are schedules from construction documentation, design validation, communication, and so on. So um, all of these are going to go inside of the pack, but what would you get with all of these information inside of the pack? Let me actually get off my PowerPoint presentation and get into the demo of what is going on inside of the pack, shall we? So. I'm going to be opening up that productivity pack that I have. And this is basically um, all of those contents inside of the different folders. You have to be paying for it once. You're not going to be paying for anything for upgrading into a new version or installing it. It doesn't get expired. Uh, as Revit is going to go into um, uh, more recent versions, 
these packs, the, the people from CTC and ATG companies south of the border in the US, they are actually working into upgrading all of those with that, those compatibility, uh, which is compatible with the recent uh, version of Revit. What goes into the pack is that you're going to be having a lot of different add-ins into it, the, a lot of Dynamo scripts for, uh, that you can run in, in your, pro, uh, your projects, family processor settings, plotter and exporter settings. Uh, many different families, annotative families and model families with all of those uh, parameters and data contents already in, installed inside of them. Uh, a sample project, so basically it is going to show you how your mechanical is going to be talking, talking in with all of those data and uh, working with placeholders for mechanical, uh, structural and architectural uh, cans. Also, these uh, contents are, are mostly in, in an imperial unit, but ATC have been challenging itself to be creating a beta version in uh, metric. So you're going to be getting the beta version in metric also already. Um, a lot of different schedules and details on a separate file so that you can be inserting the schedules um, not only uh, that, that, that is only available uh, or, or relatable with, with what you are going to do, not populating your, your file and sizing it up. And then all of these shared parameters, master shared parameter settings. And the last one is the project starter. So basically this is a template for you guys that you're going to be using or starting fr from that pack of MEPPP without having anything, any of those models included inside of that. So basically the most important part of the pack is the sample project. You're going to check what is done in the sample project and how we are manipulating the data and then putting all of those sample projects into the starter project. And then the last one is um, um, an Excel file um, that is giving you uh, some uh, direction and validations for uh, how to start up a, a typical project setup with a, a step-by-step -step ins instructions. And this MEPPP user manual PDF that uh, having, as I said to you before, embedded uh, lots of data, lots of information, more than 18 hours of video and instructions. Okay, so I have been opening up both of my sample project and a starter project. So as you can see, I'm going to be showing you and going over all of these step-by-step -step for to, to get to know how many of them and, um, and what is included in each of them. The starting project, if I'm going to go on manage and manage links, you see that there are many different placeholder link added inside of your, your starting project. So for example, if I'm going to go on uh, the 3D, even though I don't have any uh, geometry of the project, the electrical, structural, and uh, architectural placeholder are already inserted and created inside of my project setup. You will be having a starting view, basically talking about, so if you are just hiring a new V uh, person for drafting, this is where they are starting your project, any of the useful information notices that where to go first and what to do first. <coughs> And then also the project um, project managers, all of those useful information, contact data uh, information. And down in here, you're going to be having a lot of different uh, uh, schedules that uh, holds useful information for a typical project that you're going to be working with. 
on the top of your starting view, you're going to be having some kind of uh, completing data. So for example, if you are working with any kind of uh, new existing dots um, and you're going to be working with phasing in your project, uh, putting that, actually let's go into that schedule so we can see this, putting that letter E or any of those letters that is uh, the naming convention of your, um, um, of your firm. Um, adding that in when you're going to be creating any of the tags for your ducting system and uh, plumbing risers and so on, are going to be automatically adding that letter E for existing in the face. Or similar to any of those relocated elements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can be man manipulating these from the sample view. Let's go to the project browser and see what is the content of those um, views that is as created as a placeholder. You're going to be having the analysis floor plans. Um, this is basically for verification of whether or not you created your design. Um, how many uh, different zones do you have? How each of these zones are going to be having um, cooling and heating load calculated to them to, to the thermal zone diagrams, etc. Um, you're going to be having uh, diagrams for verifying the design if you are supply if you are handling the supply correctly in your HVAC design, or if you're going to be oversupplying or undersupplying in your design. Under that, you're going to be having the construction documentation. So this is basically a clean up space for any of those components that you're going to be readily making it in the sheets. So all of these views, are cleaned up views for when you're going to go on and putting those views on the sheets. On the other side, you're going to be having a set of um, views for working diagrams. So these are basically a mud box. Whatever that you're going to be working on, If you are making these views like very muddy, uh, practicing different kind of uh, components, adding different kind of symbols that you're not intending uh, to be located in your sheets, etc., it is going to be on the working set of diagrams. You're going to be having working set for HVAC design, lighting, mechanical piping, riser diagrams, etc. Uh, plumbing, power system, and all of those symbols, uh, symbol sets that um, comes automatically with MEPPP. Um, after the construction documentation, you're going to be having coordination. So for example, if you're going to be uh, on a constant basis, you're exporting things for Navisworks um, clash detection. Uh, you're going to be having all of these views already set for you. And the last one is project setup. So basically, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Patrick is going to be talking a lot more on the 26th, um, is basically when you're going to be creating your project, <coughs> all of those projects set up uh, are created and um, and, and placed in that diagram, uh, you're going to be having um, a different kind of uh, work, setting, work set related scope boxes inside of your project. So you're going to be adjusting the, the scope box based on the footprint of your project and a couple of other scope boxes on the side for each of those systems and then those scope boxes are going to be focusing all, all of those information, for example, for the power scope box. If you want to be making this kind of <coughs> uh, power related information in electrical room, for example, you're going to be moving that uh, scope box inside of that uh, 
inside of that uh, electrical box and you're good to go. You don't have to be putting it anything extra or changing any extra information. HVAC scope box or plumbing scope box. Let's go into this sections and see what's going on in here. So right now I don't have any uh, architectural background, but as you can see in this section, you're going to be having a lot of different, I, I guess like a typical of eight floor building plus the roof building. And each of those levels are created with uh, the named kind of uh, reference planes and each of them have been creating an actual um, verification for how is the different, um, what is the, uh, the height of those uh, reference planes and the actual level they are located at. So if I'm going to be changing this into uh, any other kind of diagram, so say I'm going to make this to be seven foot, it is going to be changing the seven foot, but the naming convention of the that, that level, it is still on, on eight foot. This is for tracking all of the information according to what needs to be set and all of those uh, calculations. If I don't have that many levels, I can be easily selecting all of them and deleting them. I'm not going to go into too much details about setting up your scope boxes, adjusting the levels of them uh, according to your project, because this is going to be the scope for the next webinar. All right, so what is next? What do I have <coughs> as my resources in my starter project? Uh, take a look. You're going to be having a number of different schedules and, and then categorized based on each of those disciplines. So general different tools and schedules, electrical schedules based on each of those disciplines in the electrical, mechanical ones, and then those mechanical ones are having many different design verification schedules and equipment schedules. So for example, if I'm going to go on um, gas fired water heater, for example, these schedules are going to be already ready-made created. Take a look at the formatting system on the top of them. You're going to be having many different um, um, column header uh, formatting for your uh, for your uh, data, <coughs> sequencing of the parameters, and so on. <coughs> Sorry. And because um, MEPPP wanted to have everything in consistency, um, you're going to be having um, everything, all of those headers and formatting units uh, based on what we have in here as a schedule called master fixture schedules. Now, I know that it might not be adding any values to you, but I just wanted to drag your information to how many different parameters and how many different formatting and all of those uh, uh, column headers and even the industry specific specifications are added into your master format. So any of those equipments that you're going to be having is just basically a chunk of that master format copied and pasted into that mechanical equipment schedule. Um, next, we are going to go on uh, sheets. So as I said to you before, all of those construction documentation uh, views that is in the construction documentation header 
are already created all of these sheets that normally a mechanical has to go into and then create and name them each of them which is basically taking hours and hours of work has been created has been created as a as a view set and sheet set schedules and then those um, uh, view of uh, the, the related view of them are included inside of the, the sheets. So, for example, the title sheet um, is basically having this template. Uh, mechanical consultants are, are not using their own template. They are normally taking the architectural uh, architectural title blocking, and then you, they're going to be having uh, all of those sheet index inside of that, and um, all of those symbols, general mechanical symbols, HVAC symbols. Now these are all not 2D. These are and actual symbols that are like a, on a 3D basis and we will get there. So also a couple of different uh, noting diagrams. Now, I know that uh, each mechanical um, firm is having their own general notes and it's normally it's uh, combining in, in multiple sheets. So these are basically customizable. So you can be putting in your uh, general notes or keynote legend if you are having anything. So basically these are fully customizable, fully, fully relatable based on your sheet diagrams. Um, and then uh, as much as those families that you're going to be having in your starter pack, uh, in your MEPPP pack, you can be loading it into this uh, template if you wish and also a number of groups, detail groups and model groups, uh, which is basically a ready-made assembly of different uh, HVAC systems, lighting systems, uh, plumbing systems, etc. already ready-made and um, calculated. So this is it for uh, what we are having in the starter diagram. Um, so guys, um, I don't know if you are able to unmute yourself and ask your questions. Uh, the way we are going to go through the questions is that each, each section that I'm going to be, because I don't want to be like following up and going into the next section where uh, the questions are coming back from the, from the previous section. Do you, so far from the starter pack and what goes into MEPPP, um, do you have any questions so far? I don't know if you can unmute yourself. So I see that uh, a couple of guests, Curtis, there, and Dicky and Ron. Okay, so I'm getting uh, the questions based on uh, chat in the chat. I can to see the place. Okay, so. Would you mind just like uh, putting all of your uh, questions in the chat box and I'm going to go over them um, and answer them one, one by one. No questions? All right, so let's go into uh, what is in the sample project and take a look at what do, what do we have for a project that is already set and made up. <coughs> uh, so I have a couple of views already open inside of this. Um, inside of your uh, starter project, uh, sorry, sample project, you see that this is MEPP 19. So by the way, guys, there, uh, the version of MEPPP that I'm using right now is version 19. Um, the people on CTC are, are working day in, day out um, to make the next version of MEPPP 
which is having a very nice, um, nicer amount of information, the smarter amount of packs uh, and families and, um, and diagrams, uh, model diagrams, that is going to make the uh, Revit 20 to, uh, 2019 to 2021 a lot easier. So as I'm going to be introducing the pack, I'm going to show you what I don't have right now. And they are in the middle of creating that and, and exporting it into the views. Those people in, in the um, attendees who have been purchasing the MEPPP um, and they have been purchasing the previous model of MEPPP, you will be having access to the new version, which is 19.1 version of MEPPP as soon as this is out. And we are going to let you know. <coughs> Let's go into um, the sample project. Um, similar to the starting project, the sample project is going to be having the, um, the uh, first view uh, with all of those schedules that I mentioned earlier. Uh, let me double check that this is going to be having the architectural background uh, created and loaded. Yes, the architectural engineering background is in there. I'm going to like system classification, similar to the starter project, I'm going to be having, let me close all of these so you can see better. I'm going to be having basically the same amount of things in the starter project. Um, the analysis view is having a number of different uh, energy format. And right now I'm happy that, that, that I can show you what goes into the thermal zone diagram, for example. So this is my architectural background. Uh, you can be assigning different kinds of zones based on your mechanical equipment that is assigned into each zone. Uh, so right now, in this case, I'm going to be having like a VAV system. And then each of the zones are having tags that are cooling and heating load calculated regarding to that zone already created. The tag for your uh, room and space calculation is also giving you how many square foot is uh, going into each of those. Also, the sensors and moderators are going to be adding into the uh, the floor, so you will you will know where are your thermostats located and how you're going to be creating. All of them are color coded, and they are going to be having uh, some kind of legend for uh, getting to know which of these colors are referring to which zones. Each of these are created by the uh, right view template that um, CTC are going to be creating. So for example, if I'm going into that identity data and the view template of my thermal zone diagram, you will see that the color scheme uh, HVAC zones are assigned into that color scheme. Uh, let's keep going. So in your HVAC design diagram, for example, you will be having a uh, different kind of color scheme based on the velocity or, and the flow that is uh, going on inside of your duct. So for example, those uh, red markets that are going to show up as red, there's no flow diagram is inside of them. But as soon as I'm going to be selecting any of those dots, the supply air is going to be having, and then the, the, uh, the flow CFM is going to be uh, color coded. So you will know at each of the time, what is the, uh, what is the diffuser that is connected to my di diagram, which one of them are having a flow calculated in them and which one of them are not. Um, on my working diagrams, so however, if I'm going to go on uh, my first floor HVAC system, for example, you're going to be having these kind of uh, families that are having a lot more data. 
So basically, if I'm going to be wrapping up this whole webinar into one word is that uh, using these templates, we are organizing the data that we're going to um, have in, in, our, in our project. For example, this air terminal, when I'm going to be selecting that, you see that there are many different kinds of data aside from that Revit out of the box was added in, in, um, inside of that family. The design neck velocity, for example, what is the next size that you're going to be having for this? Um, is it going to be a 12 by 12 laying module or 24 by 24 laying module? The good thing about the air terminals specifically is that these can, can be either host or hosted component inside of your project. And that is going to be this kind of parameter. If you're going to be checking on the placing on level, then in that case, this is going to be this is going to be according to this parameter, which is called AFF elevation. So it is taking this kind of uh, UCS diagram that is taking its value or its, its level from a, an elevation or a level. Um, so if it's going to be a hosted component, it is going to be taking the elevation from the level. If it's a, uh, if it's hosted on your T-bar reflected ceiling plan, it is going to be created on the reflected ceiling plan regardless of the a ASS elevation. So this is disregarded. The other thing is that, are you ready for something funny? If you're going to have something, some, some new person which doesn't know a lot about the flow and velocity and next size of your uh, diffuser and kind of selected both of them. They, they don't know anything about this and kind of selected both of them or the wrong diagram. It is going to be having uh, those diagrams with the with the wrong input application. So it is taking all of those sizes. So if if they they put in all of those both both of these modules set, Medusa is happening. So it's giving you this kind of um, angry face that this is not happening in it's it's not possible in the HVAC design board. So this is either or. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is because everything is, is uh, connected properly and those system are actually calculated all of the, uh, the flow uh, properly with, with your diagram, any of, the, any of the time that you're going to be changing the flow direction, um, the flow inside of those docks and connection of them are going to be calculated differently. So for example, if I'm changing my 100 CFM flow, it, it goes inside of the duct. So the flow inside of the duct is calculated. This is going to be affected and your mechanical equipment is going to be affected. <coughs> Let me show you how. So if I'm going to go on my schedule and search um, airflow, Uh, space airflow summary. Um, is giving you this, this is schedule, which is directly connected to your HVAC diagram airflow calculation that I just showed to you. <coughs> Um, just give me one second, this one. Um, and then let's say um, this uh, diffuser is going to be created on my 
uh, hallway, this hallway, the pit uh, space 108, and the flow calculation for it is 100 CFM. Now, if I'm going to go on um, my re uh, related uh, schedule, you see that you're going to be having all of those number, space numbers are uh, corrected. The name of those spaces, the area square footage of, and the volume calculation of those spaces are categorized. You're going to, this is, this is MEP out of uh, the box. So you're going to be having an actual airflow created and the supply and calculated airflow is going to be created in them. And on this uh, column, you're going to be having this conditional formatting, um, which, high, which is highlighting the, uh, the values that are plus or minus 5% uh, from the actual and calculated airflow. So if I'm going to be having that into, into that fire, the pit, that uh, space that I was actually supplying my air to, and then changing this CFM from 100 to 60 CFM, for example, you see that um, it is dynamic. So you're going to be having all of those CFM calculation, <coughs> the calculated flow already created, and then the, the terminal, uh, the conditional formatting is also dynamically changed. Let me give you an, another good example. So for example, these restrooms are for, um, for my uh, women washroom and men washroom. And it was created with the area and volumetric uh, specification. You see that you're, go you're not going to be supplying any, uh, any airflow to, to your washroom because I'm not supplying air, fresh air to my washroom, but in your exhaust calculation, actual exhaust airflow, you're taking away 280 CFM. So it is going to be taking in, into account those formulas to get to know that this area is going to be under pressurized for 190 CFM. So the minus number value is under pressurized. The, the ones that are plus sign is over pressurized system. So these are the good schedules that are giving you very good amount of information uh, for your working views and diagrams. Uh, let's go to another uh, very nice workflow. So let's say I'm going to be having um, mechanical rising system. So actually, let me go into details, for example. So I'm going to be having uh, a number of different uh, 3D working views and, and then also uh, a lot of different mechanical model group symbols. So let's say I'm going to be working on any of those components for my uh, plumbing network diagram. So if I'm going to go on my, my working plumbing riser, domestic hot water and cold water, you see that uh, there are Again, a lot of the, a lot of these view templates are already set up. So if I'm going to make these riser diagrams from scratch, I will go ahead and create a new 3D and I'm going to check none so so you can see my 3D view. And then I'm going to be creating uh, this selection box down into this session uh, so that I'm all of my risers. I, actually, this is, this is showing me the dot riser diagrams, but I want to be changing this into my domestic um, 
flow, uh, domestic airflow diagram, for example. So if I'm going to go on that view template and change this from the none to um, plumbing riser or any other components, it is going to be directly taking me into those plumbing risers with all of your domestic cold water system and uh, venting system, domestic hot water system, and those modeling components inside of them. So a good thing about, and then also uh, all of those floor drains and, and then sanitary, if I'm going to be making this like uh, above the uh, floor, you can be also uh, changing this to be above the floor. So I'm, I'm actually disregarding anything under the floor, etc., etc. So within a matter of seconds, I'm going to be having these, these pieces of information that is very crucial for me. So while we are on that subject, so for example, um, um, this is the riser diagrams for my uh, so 3D riser diagrams for my plumbing uh, fixture. Let's say I'm going to go on that working uh, floor plan and in my plumbing plan. And you see that, um, and, and then I'm going to be changing this thick lines into thin lines so I can, I can see all of these informations a lot easier. Uh, you see that all of those connection components and all of those assembly of uh, pipes are very important. Normally, we are going to be working on diagrammatic uh, kind of assembly. And those diagrammatic assembly, uh, my experience tells me that normally we are going to be creating a lot more that actually goes into the uh, 3D when you are you're having uh, a plumber assembly created. So because all of those are technically some kind of a typical assembly of items uh, in METPP, you're going to be having a special kind of um, groups. Those groups are um, that there's so much work has been done in, into them. So all of these assemblies have been double checked with the subcontractors, the plumbing subcontractors. And as you can see, if, if I'm going to be just like dragging one of these assemblies, so let's say uh, bar, um, one of these assemblies that is having everything, like all of the workrooms. And obviously, you know, from the fact that I'm going to be, I was changing my uh, work set to be in the plumbing. Otherwise, it is going to show up like these dashed lines. You see that these like dashed lines that are half tone are actually showing me the placement of my ducts. But because I'm not going to be on the right kind of work set, they are going to show up half done and I since I'm I am in the in the plumbing work set it is going to be showing up that for me and then you see that any of those mechanical equipments MEPPP standing for uh, or, or uh, counting on those uh, geometry of them are coming from architects so they are not modeling any of those uh, plumbing fixtures these are just basically pucks that you're going to be creating in your assembly, but those pucks are actually having everything that needs to be in the form of calculation. So let's say all of those value proposition, flow direction, calculating the fixture units when it comes into accumulating all of those uh, uh, assemblies, all of them are automatically created. If I want to tag them automatically, I'm going to be selecting that model and I'm going to go on 
attaching detail groups and this is the tagging so I'm going to be checking that and all of them with the fixture unit for each of them are already automatically tagged even the size of those units are already automatically tagged now let's say you are kind of having this scenario that you're not having all of these connections. So you can be basically modeling it or uh, making the adjustments based on that. So you're going to be selecting that and grouping it based on your scenario. And then you're going to be selecting these components that are not going to be there. And then basically with an easy connection of those pipes together, you are going to be still having the assembly without those uh, plumbing fixtures. So it's taking a lot less time. It is still going to be with, with a lot less space. You know from the fact that if you're going to be having a, a tight amount of space in your plumbing design, um, it is so hard for um, adding all of those components in a way that like all of those fixture units and, and so on are, are going to be, then the flow is calculated. So basically I'm going to be selecting all of these and and just nudging them back. The flows is still calculating everything. Takes a little bit of time. And there you go. So the rest of my uh, units are actually automatically and very smartly was, was created. You see that even though I was adjusting all of those calculations, I'm still having the right kind of fixture unit calculated for my main drop edge. So it is actually on the go calculating for the fixture unit and the size of uh, all of my uh, pipes. Okay, so I have seven more minutes. I'm going to be very quickly talking about all of those assembly um, and symbols calculation that we are going to be um, populating over and I showed you on the, on the first sheet of the design. Uh, feel free to write down any of the questions so far from uh, the, starter uh, the starter project or the sample project that I'm going to go over. Um, and then if we are, we are not going to go um, if you're not going to be having any uh, questions, I'm going to be unmuting everybody for uh, the interactive part of the session. So inside of my project, I'm going to be having, uh, sorry, working, um, a number of different symbol elements. As I said to you before, uh, this is the uh, MEPP number 19 that I'm going to be using. Uh, there are a lot of other symbol, uh, uh, a lot more symbols also in 3D. It is, it is going to go into that. So let me actually show you what do I mean by this. So if I'm going into my uh, starter, this is a sample project. I'm going to go on the starter project and go into my my working test elements riser. Um, you see that there is uh, there's a lot of research right now is going to be created in terms of any of those components that we are going to be creating in that uh, project. The families are actually populated in 2D and also in 3D. Um, you can see the expansion tanks, the boiler creation, um, any of those electrical families and the clearance that is supposed to be around them based on the building code. 
uh, creation. All of these pumps and each of them, when you're going to be selecting any of those, you're going to be having uh, these populated over the symbol riser diagram. So basically, there is so much things going on in each of those families from the fabrication perspective. Uh, for example, if I'm going to go on uh, the rooftop unit or, or any of those electrical components, for example, how each of those electrical components uh, are going to be, what are the lighting uh, characteristics of them? Uh, let me give you an exhaust fans, a rooftop unit. When you're going to be having any of those uh, outdoor air diagram, the supply duct that is connected to them, the return duct, which of them are going to be having which surface uh, created based on the actual industry standard. And the actual industry standard, I'm, I'm talking about most of the big manufacturing companies such as Carrier or uh, Tidex or um, <clears throat> like those big manufacturing companies, the way they are all created. So you will be having access to all of these format creation in both 2D and, and 3D calculation points. Let me actually go into one of those other uh, symbol diagrams that I want to show you. Let's say HVAC symbol list. Um, I know that most of the time, Revit out of the box, we are going to be having uh, these kind of, uh, um, you're going to be having uh, all of these created on a 2D basis. But because, they, uh, because the people who are developing uh, this template, they wanted to have an actual data and diagram um, created with how this, these uh, uh, system families are actually behaving, how the system is going to go sh show up as a drop in supply um, outside air duct or return outside the air duct in the actual floor plan of the riser diagram and drop, the, drop in diagram, they were creating all of these lists. Aside from that, you're going to be having, these are, these are, these are 3D diagrams. These are an actual 3D duct that we are having or creating a view based on those ducts. But these diagrams are a 2D, um, annotative components. In the new version of uh, uh, MEPPP, um, they realized that a lot of different symbols are going to be having a lot of similarities between the US and um, Canada, between the different kind of uh, um, firms that they are creating their own standards of, of uh, pipe uh, valves and, and everything inside of the, those diagrams. So with the new version of MEPPP 19.1, uh, you will be having an assembly of, let's say you're going to be uh, saying that instead of that third triangle, I'm going to be having a tick or this is going to be too small for me. I want this to be uh, three, uh, this is actually three 30 seconds of an inch, but I want this to be uh, one sixteenth of an inch. So basically you are with your um, annotative components, you're going to be bounded with uh, these check marks when you're going to be selecting that and in your, I don't have access to it right now, but I'm going to explain the situation. When you're selecting the valve in your instance properties, you're going to be having the check, check uh, points that when you're checking that this, triangle shows up. If you are unchecking that and then checking the tick, this symbol is going to be on the side customized according to what you want. So there's basically a lot of things that, a lot of flexibility with these kind of diagrams. Um, 
just uh, working, so let's say, mechanical symbols diagram, for example. There's a lot of flexibilities that goes inside of these uh, riser diagrams um, to, to make it make it customizable. And then you can be changing them on the go based on the standard creation of your firm. Um, it is 12.31. I'm going over one minute from my allowable time introducing the mechanical part of the uh, MEPP. Um, do you have any question, guys? I was unmuting you guys, so I guess you can be unmuting yourself and introducing yourself um, and ask me any questions you might have. Any questions so far? No, no questions? I don't see anything in the chat box as well. All right, so um, before I'm going to be uh, closing this session, I'm going to redirect your attention into, based on whatever that I was, I was talking to, obviously I didn't have the time to go over all of those tips and tricks that uh, goes inside the MEPPP pack, but I want to direct your attention into two different resources that, that I have. One of them is uh, this Excel sheet that is basically, if you're not having any of those uh, mechanical resources from SolidCAD or CTC, you can be basically going over all of those instructions to be setting up your project, creating your different um, views, um, importing the, uh, the category and view template components and then start working with that. So this is basically a step, 92 different steps to set up your project using that template and then getting it ready to go with your own projects. And the other thing is that MEPPP user manual, as I, as I said to you before, there's, there's more than 18, worth, 18 hours worth of um, actual data and instructional videos. Don't worry, it's not going to be 18 hours by default, like you have to go into 18 hours of video. It is actually giving you the table of content and again, like introducing how all of these guys are set up and how you're going to be customizing on the set of like written kind of form notification. And then also at the end of them, these kind of like video sample videos, each of them are going to be five minutes videos directly to the point. And you're going to <coughs> follow that and see how each of these features are set up. So please go ahead, if you have it, <coughs> if you have purchased the MEPP, PPAC, uh, I will direct your attention to please go into that MEPPP user manual and most of 99% of the uh, features are actually uh, organized and introduced in that manual. Um, I have a question there uh, is, is telling me, will this presentation be available to download? Yes, we are. Um, we are uh, recording the session, so I'm going to be editing this up and I'm going to be sending it to everybody. But rather than, rather than uh, the recordings there, do you have any questions for me? I'm going to give everybody one more minute to write down their questions, and if you don't have any other questions, we are going to be wrapping up the session for now. I guess that's it for now. Patrick, thank you, Patrick, <laughs> for your compliment. 
And thank you very much, guys, to be um, uh, sitting in my session. Uh, as I said to you before, uh, don't uh, 